Denmark Bessie was born in either Africa or the Caribbean between 1767 and 1770. He was the personal slave of Joseph Bessie, who was the captain of a slave trading ship. In 1783, Joseph and Denmark Bessie settled in Charleston, South Carolina. In 1800, Denmark Bessie won $1,500 in the lottery and bought his freedom for $600. He tried to buy his wife and children's freedom too, but their master refused to sell it. After becoming free, Denmark Bessie opened up a carpentry shop in Charleston. He became quite successful and was looked up to for his success and ability to read, write, and speak several languages. Denmark Bessie hated seeing other African Americans being mistreated and looked down upon. He would tell the blacks around his shop, You are as good as any man. We are slaves, they would reply. And for saying so, you deserve to be enslaved, he'd fire back. You will remain slaves as long as you believe you are. Denmark Vesey began to plan his rebellion in 1821. He was inspired by his hate for the inferiority of blacks, the successful revolt in Haiti in the 1790s, the Bible, the closing of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, and the fact that his family was still enslaved. Denmark Vesey carefully chose his co-conspirators for the rebellion, which included Peter Poyas, Gola Jack Pritchard, and Monday Joe. Vesey used his respected position as a successful free man and leader of the African American Church to organize the revolt. He often used the French and Haitian revolutions, the Bible, and U.S. congressional debates over slavery to support his cause. The revolt was cunningly organized in a way that would make it hard for it to be discovered. All slaves were separated into individual groups called cells, and each slave would only know the plan and the people involved in their cell. The purpose of the cells was so that if a slave turned in the rebellion, they could only betray their group. At its peak, about 9,000 slaves and free African Americans around Charleston were involved in the plan. Denmark Bessie's plan for the rebellion was to set fire to the governor's mills and capture the arsenals, guardhouses, powder magazines, and naval stores. As the whites came out to stop the fires, the rebels would slaughter them and then go into their houses and murder their families. Lastly, the rebels would escape to ships waiting in the harbor and sail to freedom. However, before the plan could be put into action, the revolt was betrayed. The organization of the cells made the plot harder for authorities to figure out, but enough slaves reported to the authorities that Vesey called off the attack. Federal troops were brought into Charleston to help prevent the revolt, and 35 African American men were executed, including Vesey and his co-leaders. Another 42 men were banished. As a result of the unsuccessful revolt, South Carolina and some other states passed more laws restricting blacks' rights. These included laws prohibiting contact between free African Americans and slaves, and the Negro Seamen Act. The Negro Seamen Act stated that all free black sailors must be jailed while their ships were in port. Denmark Vesey's rebellion plan was especially frightening to slave owners because it was complex, there were a lot of slaves involved, and the violence was very thorough. Vesey became a symbol to abolitionists all over the country because of his cunningness, courage, and determination. An example of another but more successful slave revolt was Nat Turner's rebellion in 1831. Turner, who believed God had called upon him to lead this revolt, took a band of slaves and went from house to house, killing a total of 57 white people in the area. When his band was confronted, he escaped, but was later caught and executed. A more recent figure in the fight for racial equality is Martin Luther King Jr., who was born in 1929 and assassinated in 1968. He was like Denmark Vesey because he also fought for African Americans equality, but different because he believed in peaceful protests instead of violence. Today you can see many signs of how these brave people's work has affected society. Even though we are still working towards total equality, we should be grateful for these people's contributions as we work towards a better and more fair tomorrow.